with your host, Lexington Steel, and co-host, Andre Lavelle, and Johnny Depp, on LA Talk Radio. Let's get it in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Man Cave live show with Lexington Steel, Andre Lavelle, the Dr. Dre in the yep. house, Johnny Depp always going deeper and deeper. We're about to go into it. People, it is indeed June twenty fifth, and another sunny Southern Californian evening. Hot. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Ninety one degrees out here in the Southland. Uh, apparently, there's been a, an uproar, if you will, of a number of things happening within American culture over the last few days, and we are going to examine it from our perspective. Uh, now, at, before we came live onto the cameras this evening here at Man Cave, and please participate in tonight's discussion at eight one eight. Five seven zero five zero eight five. Johnny Depp, who appears courtesy of Formula R three, rise rocking and restoring. Yes, sir. Um, you had brought to our attention that there was something that you wanted to express coming right out of the box without hesitation. Let's delve. So off of the gloves. The gloves. The gloves came are off? off when you come into the man cave. You leave the gloves where? The gloves at okay. the door. Leave the gloves at the door. Yep, okay, sure. yeah. okay. Well, let's just hop into it then. Right. You know. Now, before we before we aired, we was talking about the, the the Confederate flag issue and how they wanted to take the flag down, and you know the representation of, of what the flag is about. And I was simply stating to you that just because you take the flag down, that didn't change the behavior of the people. Now we know it's a symbol, but it's been up there for years and years and years. So. You think if they take it down now, you think the people's behavior is going to change? I don't think so. And they act like they don't want to take it down. Well, a lot of people would argue that it's such you know it's a part of their southern culture, and I get that, and that it it you know it, it serves to provide a remembrance for their family members who fought and died on the Confederate side of of the but, the, the Civil War. But my thing is this: if you call yourself an American. Let's look at the flag, a rebel flag. Like, right. what does the word rebel mean? Meaning one who rebels. Mm -hmm. You know, who were they rebelling against? They were rebelling against the United States. They didn't want to be part of the Union. Mm. So they rebel. So they got their rebel flag and they, oh, that's part of our history and blah, because we wanted to break off because we all know they wanted to keep their slaves. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about, man. And then, you know, but as a black person, we see that like, yo, that's derogatory. Like, how are you gonna let that, let that fly, you know? Mm -hmm. And we, here it is, it's 2015, and, and the mentality hasn't changed, you know? So, I, you know, pretty much like I was saying, it was like, you know, you take the flag down, but if, you're, if, you're, if your behavior remains the same, like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, get rid of the cancer, not right. just some of it. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and, it, and the question that it becomes raised is, is this, uh, is this something that needs to be relegated um, to a uh, museum, you know, as a form of, of certainly representative of a period of, of, of uh, struggle, you know, and uh, institutional, um, uh, you know, an institutional expatriation of part of American culture, albeit those that created and built or upon the backs of this part of American culture, and, and you know, now this may be argumentative to many, and I will stand uh, stand corrected if you do feel to rebut me in any way at eight one eight five seven zero five zero eighty five. Please do. I would say that the Confederate flag is most akin to the flying of the swastika mm. to a Jewish American, mm. to an Israeli, to anybody of Judeo religion. You went there. Um, wow. I, I certainly go there straight away because I feel that if we can consider something. Um, as caustic as the swastika, then we must consider the 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 stars and bars as equally caustic to um, to a, a part of American cultural society. What well, didn't they lose though? They lost. Yes. Yeah. So so both why, cases. Both, yeah. Uh, they so lost. why are why did they even have an opportunity to display? It? If you defeat your enemy, you don't give them a chance to throw it in your face that they're still around they lost you lose the fight yeah they lost done. they lost and not <laughs> only that they had to become part of the union because they couldn't stand on their own do you know south carolina was like one of the poorest states in in the nation 
at one point. Yeah. I don't know where the, it is. The, I don't know where it is. I don't know where I mean, it is up the ladder now. I know Mississippi is it's pretty like high. Mississippi or it might yeah. or you know yeah that, that, in that, that area mm-hmm. you know. So I mean you got yeah. all this going against you, but I guess if you wanna you know if you wanna stick your chest out so to speak, and this is the way of doing it. Hey, well you know what 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 bothers me is that. And, and, and I draw this comparison because I think it's the most tangible of comparisons, the, the swastika and the stars and bars. Um, you know, if you can penalize uh, people for displaying the swastika, uh, and there are laws, laws of such um, internationally, mm-hmm. uh, then and I'm not saying that one needs to go to jail for, for flying the stars and bars. I'm simply saying that um, in, in how is it that people can, you know, with with motivation and vigor defend such a blatant image of denigration i tell you why i tell you how because there's hate and, but but i'm saying those same people would look at the swastika and be like well that you know never let that fly again right and they'll look at the stars and bars and say well that's okay and let me ask and i have you. a problem with that right. not, not, mm-hmm. but, but let me finish on my way in here megan kelly on Fox News, oh my God, uh, was was covering this this particular thing, and she spoke about before leading into commercials. She spoke about the number of uh, major corporations who have decided to no longer sell anything representative of the Confederate flag, and she had a particular uh, she spoke with a particular uh, angle that it was preposterous and or even funny that this was a um, a situation that so many people are rushing to remove the stars and bars. Now, if it only has been brought to light within the last couple of days and it has only been brought to light within the last couple of days, that doesn't mean that this should not have been done a long time ago. And it's too bad that it takes the actions of one Dylan, Dylan Roof, some uh, maniac 21-year-old, uh, probably video game expert, uh, who decided to, uh, to take his issues to the streets, albeit a manifesto that's come to light. Um, you know, where is where is this? You know, we know where this is coming from. We just want to make sure we put an end to it. But here's, here's well, I, I think it's it's also interesting that Walmart has decided to remove all of its. Uh, I can tell you that merchandise. I, I can right. understand. But I see why. they still support international slavery because most of the stuff that they are, are selling in their stores is import. Now, would you say that begs the question of, of manufacturing? Then I don't. That's a leap. Well, well, I, I, I mean, you know, know. you're still supporting it, though. I mean, if you want it to stop, then you don't support it. <laughs> well, you, yeah, know, but you know what? Not to cut you off, mm-hmm. Lex, but that's a little touchy because, it, you know, as an entrepreneur yourself, mm-hmm. you, you always want to want business. Manufacturing, so, you want to keep efficiencies include exactly. keeping your costs down. Now, it does, it does hurt the American public because a lot of j- jobs have gone away. But you know what? You know, most of the American culture, they want to play keep up mm-hmm. with the Joneses, so to speak. Or sometimes they want to live above their means, so they got to, but they're not paying them enough because yeah. you can pay the Chinaman or whatever, or the guy in India, what, three bucks? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Not even on the racist no, the reason shit, why I like because, because what. Uh, <laughs> you could pay them like three dollars right. an no, hour. No, this is true. It, yeah, I mean? outsourcing and then, it. Yo, word, and it'll go. That that three dollars will yeah. stretch a long, a long way. way. You can't do that here. I'm just saying that that it's be, it'd be difficult for me to say that these major corporations, including your Amazons and your WalMarts, your Sears and your Ebays, that that we could hold them to task for where they may buy their product from, because I think that's a different idea, the, the different notion, I think that then you're getting into something that would be analogous to uh, the, the Jordan brand sneaker made by Nike in overseas. Well, mar- how is that any different than Blood Diamonds? Right, right. But is, but is that an American, is well, that a if, Confederate if people, flag issue or is that an international economic issue? Well, you can't say you are against racism or slavery. And, and is that racism then? Is, is that racism because you... I, I don't find it racist that I might take my manufacturing to say Bangladesh no, wait, for two fifty an hour right. versus manufacturing in, in, in North Dakota or, or South Carolina for twelve dollars an hour. Just as an entrepreneur at Johnny D Express. It's just math. Yeah. You so, know, I so, mean as a so is that racist? As a, that's you not racist. Depend- so by right. saying that's just math, look where that mindset came from. But see, as, okay. a, as well, a, so if you if you you're what paying people do? the minimum amount of money working them to the bone and you're overpriced 
you, you're, what you're that charging with, more than your product. What does that have to do, do with, with the flag? With the Confederate flag. Yeah. Because the Confederate, the, 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 the Confederate flag represents what they're perpetuating. Oh, you mean free, free labor. Free labor is the reason. I see what you're saying. Okay, hell of a correlation. Um, yeah, a it took me a minute to right come there. around and, and yeah. decipher that math. Right, that way. <laughs> uh, you, know. you, you know what, man? I think with the Walmarts and people of that nature, they realize the buying power of black people. Mm. So... Hey, we want your money, so we're gonna do. We're gonna accommodate you, so to uh -huh. speak. We're gonna get rid of all the 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 Confederate flag stuff that we have. Mm. I'm just thinking as far as business, but the fact remains is the flag still is still flying. Yeah. And to answer your question earlier about they could have done it years ago, right. yeah, they could have, and they voted it to try to get it done, and mm. it got shot down, right. So they've been trying to get it taken down, but they're not budging. They now, don't want to take it down. Texas, there's, I think Texas has um, has changed their law in terms of the use of the flag. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Justice Clarence Thomas um, did did write, um, a, you know, did write for the the final agreement that uh, that it needed to be changed. So kudos to Clarence Thomas being on the right side for of so, for, yeah of something yeah. racial. Um, I, I just find this very, very hard to stomach um, that there is such pushback in regards to taking a step in what would seem to be the right direction. In, in Germany, isn't the Swastik flag, isn't it done with? There I mean, it is, no so done, it is so done with that you can literally, that sim symbolism, you can literally be arrested for using. Now, here's my question to you. How come the United States can't do the same thing with this fucking rebel flag? Excuse my well, French. The, what's, the, what's the, the rebel difference? Flag, flag has replaced the Swastika flag over but, there. But the skinheads actually... Rock the rebel flag because but, of the symbolism. But you know wow. what? Here's the thing, wow. Dre. There's not too many black people in Germany for it to really affect. I don't think as it as it is in South Carolina. Affect us here, you of mean. course, oh, yeah. because but South, it, South it Carolina makes up. There's there's more blacks in South Carolina than it, that there is whites. I'm, mm. I'm sure that. That but the point is insane. what the flag represents and the fact that they know what it represents. And since they can't rock the swastika, they tick on the stars But you know what? Mm -hmm. but so, you make a good mm -hmm. point. But the, 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 the rebel flag didn't, didn't, didn't affect the Jewish history. You understand what I'm no, saying? No, it it's about hatred. Them. It's about hatred and racism. I understand that. So what, I mean, bottom line is, my, my, bottom line is we need to get rid of it like Germany got rid of the swastika right. flag. I mean, what's the big deal? You know, like, yo, take it down. It's a symbolism, yeah. true enough. Get rid of it. But how do you change people's hearts who still want to well, rock see, it? That's see, that's the, the thing. Mm -hmm. You can you can take away the symbolism all you want to. Well, that's what I was saying earlier. But they can replace it with something else. Mm -hmm. It don't make a difference. Well, okay, well, you got rid of because they're trying to equate it to their culture. Right, it's a pride you, you thing. Want, you want to embrace okay, so you so, so what you're saying, so you'll never be happy then, no matter what they put up. Is that that's what I'm gathering from you? Like, okay, you saying that they take the rebel flag down and replace it with something else? Well, no, no, no I don't I'm think they're trying to replace it. I think that that in the absence of it, they feel that they've really. I mean, look, the war has been over for so long. Yeah. The the there was no secession of the southern states from the union, um, and perhaps the use of the flag should have been buried then. Exactly, the hatchet should have been buried, you know, years ago. Um, but not when not when slavery you know. is still existing, right? And then they're gonna bury it because that's the whole problem. You won't let us keep our slaves, so we're gonna yeah. rebel against the union. Now, now, now. Bear in mind, there was a number, and there's a number of other issues, number of other but issues, that was but one of the, the prime, main because right. you took away their main source of income. Uh, uh, econo yeah, free economic, yeah, 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 free yeah, labor. You destroyed them economically, you know. and you know, and, and people just uh, just on a real quick tangent, just to, to add measure to this, mm -hmm. it is a case of. Three to four hundred plus years of free uh, labor um, under this particular the auspices of those who would espouse uh, the precepts of a flag like this uh, is the the basis for uh, uh, an economic disparity between African Americans and white Americans in the United States. Like I said, three to four hundred years worth of free labor makes one hell of a difference of constant or, or institutionally um, um, an institutional. Uh, foundation of economic superiority, and that's what we're looking at here. But we're just looking at the symbolism. Now, now I ask people out there: Is this symbolism enough that we should be gentlemen like ourselves should be irate? 
you know, it, you know, is there? Did do we push for such? Do we push or do we advocate for the removal of the South African flag when it flew for apartheid? Do we push for the advocation of the abolishment of the flag when it flew for Rhodesia? So these are the things that would raise eyebrows and raise the ire of many as we debate these topics. See, here's my take on it. Okay, you take it down. That's okay. That's progression. Right. But the thing is, does the does the behavior remain the same? Right. It's you, yeah. Can you not get laws passed to help you out in your community through Congress and things of that mm-hmm. nature? That's that's what I'm saying. I think it's does happening. That. Slowly but, but surely. Are but, you guys but familiar I don't with think that? It's not going to erase. If you take the flag down, it mm-hmm. ain't going to erase the hate. But it'll look no. good because it's symbolism. Right. But so. now, can anybody faithfully argue against one saying, look, you know, okay, you guys can take it down for the state capitol, but can you tell me I cannot fly this on my front yard? Oh, you don't have can an issue there. It ain't happening. Right. No, I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, just as Americans, <laughs> they could, they, one can fitfully argue that, hey, I can, you know, I can bear my stars right. and bars. And you know what? And then if Congress does try property. to do that, they're going to say, yo, you're going against the, you're going against the American way. You, you, you taking away our freedom. Right, but then freedom, uh, Americans, is based on the right of, you know, life, liberty, and pursuit of one's happiness. And that would include the right, not only the right to bear arms, obviously, uh, see Dylan Roof, Dylan Roof, <laughs> um, <coughs> but also um, to do stuff like to be able to fly your own flag. You know? I don't and, think and, they'll and, go that far with it. It'd be, it'd be very tough to make yeah, this, to it, say you can't fly it on your, on your own front lawn. Look, they're having a hard time to get it off the building first. Right, right. Off the, that's what off the state building, off the state I see. building, right? But I'm saying it'd be very hard to fight off the state. Yeah, off because they're not gonna. That's just like them. That's just like you saying, yo, you can't have your guns in right. South Carolina. Are you kidding me? Yeah, which nah, is, dude, that's ri- listen. When they say it's part of their culture, dog, it's, it's all part based of their on culture. They like the illusion rooted. of supremacy yeah. and and privilege, and the fact that they know, regardless of what the flag represents, none of us are gonna take it down, and that's the problem. They can display their their symbols of hate and express themselves under the Constitution without any uh, uh, fear of retribution. So I would say just the way that boy walked in that church with no fear Hello. and the cops found him knowing he was a murderer and might have been armed and they didn't even rough him up like they do innocent people who don't have weapons. They went and bought him Jack in a Box of Burger King and I mean, it's like there's two different standards of rules. Let me actually. So, with Dre. that being the case, mm-hmm. do we take it upon ourselves to follow that lead? Let me ask you this: Is let that me, the only way to get respect? Let me let me let me throw this question on the table. All right, this go for both of y'all. Are you surprised? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I mean, uh, that's I, all I want to know because a lot of people are like, "Oh my God, how could I say, dude? This is come on." Yeah. Come on, tra- from Trayvon on down, like all this mm. has been happening in front of our face, and you know what really, you know, what really bites my balls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, the 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 family, and you, you know, you do what you want to do, whatever, whatever, whatever comforts you. But I'm just saying, from a, a public perspective, it looks real bad when this guy sit here with no remorse and t- taking away your family members, and you say, "Oh my God, I forgive them because." Christianity says we should forgive. That's brainwashing. That's brainwash. Thank you, Trey. Right. Thank you, because that makes no sense. And that's what. And that's what. And that the tag on what you said. That was sleep, dog. I guarantee you. Sleep. If it had been the other way around, what? and they said a Muslim went into a white church and killed some white people, before the cops got there, if they had a description of them, they'd have been looking for them. Listen, without a doubt. And a couple innocent people might have got killed as a result of it. Listen, the, 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 it's that lynch mob mentality. That thing in Boston where that guy set that bomb on. Right, the he, brother, two yeah, brothers. Yeah, he's, right. he's Muslim. Right. And he was like, oh, in the name of Allah, you know, have mercy on the victim's family, blah, 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 right? And they went to ask the victims, like, hey, how do you feel about what he said? In what, the no of us? He was like, I ain't forgiving him for nothing. I have no words. So the point I'm trying to make is this. You have one you have one set of people, you gun them down in cold blood. Oh, I forgive you because so and so. And then you have another set of people like, hell no, why should I forgive? You took a loved one from me. Right. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear anything from you. 
fuck, pardon my French, but fuck your mercy, the whole nine yards. Right. And that's how they, and I was just like, wow, incredible. Because they know that the whole thing is the okie doke, man. They they sold it on us, yes, and sir. we we embraced it wholeheartedly. Yo, man, we ate it piece by piece. Very, uh, it's tough to 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 see uh, some of the reactions from the family members. I, I, and then the church, all the singing and the, you know, I get the sorrows and what have you, but right. it was very, very difficult for me to see the, the such a wholehearted forgiveness for this, this person that, that murdered so many. Um, is it a brainwashing or is it the fact that these were church folk and that they were in the auspices of, of studying their faith? The um, faith they were taking? Is, is a farce. It's not our faith. And they've sold it on us. That's how they keep us where we are. We constantly forgiven this. If if from mm-hmm. the jump mm-hmm. we took up arms and and I mean we still have Black Wall Street, we'd be rolling. If when Barack Obama first stepped in office and he'd have pimp slapped a couple of them fools who spoke out of term, we wouldn't be having these issues right now. Well, they want to monsterize us and make us out to be these evil monsters. Then I say, be the monster that they fear so much. Give them a reason to want their guns. They have no reason to want these guns. Well, uh, they have none whatsoever. That's me, their their own mind that's telling them that somewhere down the line is going to be retribution for what they did in the past. And they constantly doing shit, throwing it in our face, and we just letting them. It's the, like we bending over and not even getting greased. The like, channel, what you going to do? The channel, the great Martin Luther King. <laughs> Violence is not the way because there's not enough of us. So what we have to do is we have to affect them economically. We have to take the money out of their pockets. That's that ain't gonna work did. either because we you, brainwashed. We want all their shit with their see, labels you know on what? it. You know we what? want the Louis Vuitton Sucks, and all see, of that because their shit but, but it's smells to, better than our it's shit. It's up to us, the people who know, is to each one teach one, brother. Tell them, man, dude, you you wake up, you know, because that's the only way you you listen. We only twelve percent of the nation. It's not a lot. We only in pocket and. Dude, but we can't even get ourselves together. How no, do you think no, we no. get a bunch of brothers to go to, go to war when we the shoot each other is, in the street? We may be, twi- and that's more brainwashing. I, that's I, I said today, the, the media does a great job of showing us as the vile, hands out, downtrodden, we need help. I mean, so you saying George, all over so the world, black people are being persecuted. Yeah, they got kicked out of Dominican Republic. Exactly. So, I mean, <laughs> if you constantly yeah. showing black people as downtrodden, can't take care of themselves, can't do anything of value to assist in the community, why would you want them in your country? So your solution is... It's worldwide right, brainwashing right. against us. No, I understand that. But my, my question is, okay, we know the problem. What's the solution? What do Each you, of us carry ourselves as the light to change so like you said each one teach one you see that young brother out there don't be afraid speak on it that's true that's true but i'm saying as far as those are the warriors those are the men who who but i mean these gang bangers out here they got the straps change their mindset say look your brother is not your enemy when some shit like this goes down strap up and handle it if you if you so down but handle it but see here's the things right I, and I never say never, but I don't think drawing arms and going war to war, going going to war toe to toe with them. I don't think that's the answer. I think you you gotta kill them, hit them economically in the pocket, dude. You can yeah, hit them yeah, economically because yeah. that that'll hurt them more. It's just like a man with a the man with education look, is, look. A, is more a black man with an education is a lot more threatening than a man with a gun. Okay, because if I can come into your corporate, you got to look at the system the way it's and set up. You know, even that's within right. the politics, <laughs> mm-hmm. the way the country is, they can do embargoes and and whatever. But when it come down to it, what do they do? They send the military. They they'll try and talk to you for a second. But when it's all come down to it, okay. they're going to send in if the military. If you know they're going to send the military, why, why, why make a big fuss? There's other ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying. And, and, and look, peaceful way is not the pussy way. Don't, don't get it twisted. Sometimes the We've peaceful way. We've been marching way, and, in Kumbaya. No, I'm not saying march. I'm not, I'm say, not saying that's. I'm listen. not saying go to war. I'm okay, saying when right. something that's, goes that's down, wanna, that's what I want to know. Somebody okay. needs to handle it. Okay, now the only problem is, is then that person's putting themselves in harm's way because you know the reaction towards the african-american you know you know sort of civilian might be lethal so is is it necessary for all of us to be willing there's to gonna have die? to be martyrs 
Okay, the yeah. Muslims, the, the the cats over there, they strap a bomb on. They like, I'm gonna take. Okay, yeah, I see, know I'm gonna go out, but, but I'm taking you as well. That is based on is yeah, based on a religion and the religion. suggestion that there's an afterlife and, a, and something I to the. Well, these folks kumbaya right. waiting for the afterlife, forgiving this dude they who just shot them down. They suffer. That. They suffering slow, but like I said, you know, it's. <sighs> Look, I don't. I, I, I don't I, think you're gonna get a brother from South Central say, "Hey, bro, we need you to fight. We need. To, I need you yeah. to put this bomb on your back." No, no, no. The, they shooting one another anyway that. for nothing. They, ain't no. doing that they shoot one another for right. no reason right now in That's some true, city. Look, look. I, I think two things have to happen. Number one is. Um, as the African American side of society will not, they will not, there will not be an advocation or or a green light or a pass given if we all of a sudden started arming up according to our, you know, our our constitutionally protected rights to bear arms. Because then they're going to change the law, right? Because then the law now. Now, I, what I'd like to see happen is not a suggestion that there is anything, any war or battle to prepare for, but just from the standpoint of well. Certainly not. I, but while I may not make that suggestion, I will say that uh, I think that perhaps we should de- be prepared to defend ourselves and have the means to defend ourselves. I think that might make a difference in terms of what is done to us. Perhaps if we did necessarily not take up straps and arms to be offensive with such, but to be defensive. defensive. And I that guess. might change one's approach towards us because, you know what, I have a right to care just like you do. And I might be strapped as well, and so the and and their laws will protect you if you are strapped and you do come in conflict with a person that is an aggressor towards you. Protect, no, the protect laws, both. yeah, it, it's it's questionable. At right, right, it's dubious at best, yeah, but, it's they, just, but it yeah. is in place. Florida, look, Florida showed that that right. law don't stand for stand us. In the, it was a stand in the, uh, defend the, or uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? God, it just, you know, but but and as you alluded to, John, to we it. do have a twelve percent. Um, Population in the United States, and that is that has been certainly, um, uh, you know, exceeded by the Latina community um, as well. Now, if you take the African American and the Latina community in the United States, you have a very strong contingent. Right. But it is the notion that it is we are still a numeric minority um, to our white American counterparts, and so. Uh, given the fact that the white American counterpart makes great use of the right to bear arms, whether it's protection by the NRA but and so forth. Wait, don't worry, I'm just simply saying mm-hmm. there's a lot more people that are prepared if there was a conflict. And I don't think that the African-American in American society is justly prepared for any type of, of conflict, you're domestic the, conflict. You're making the assumption that all white folks are, are going to be rolling with white folks. If it's racism and we're all against racism, people who are trying to start this race war right, like based including on dylan roof yeah right i mean right well, is right well racism so ra- racism racism is is systematically that's in the system you know it's not you're gonna have the south and half of texas and then the rest of the country going but the other uh, or, or that, might be indifferent and you know the indifference might make might tilt it one way or the other those that are apathetic might make the difference between who who wins in such a conflict i just simply say that if you if people want to prepare themselves or, or just prepare themselves by way of defense, we are protected to do that. And I think that would make a big difference to people thinking they can walk up on a black person and this, you know, um, and and show, shoot up a whole church. How do you shoot up a whole church? I, I, I you know, and look, and you know what he told he 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 told him he was he said he didn't want to do it. He almost got cold feet. He said oh, because he, he felt they were. He said they were such nice people. Yeah. They were nice people, and but his that, hatred and racism overpowered. He, he said he had to he had to fulfill his mission, and not only that, he prayed with the people. Right. And right. after he prayed with them, he he simply told them, he was like, hey, look, he I'm pulled the gun out. I'm gonna give you all a reason to pray for." Now let's look at that. Right. First of all, we know this is not our religion, and I know there's a lot of people out there gonna be mad, like, "Oh, there you go with that." Mil-. No, it's just the fact that we were not Christians. You know, as a matter of fact, the word Christian didn't even come around for a long time, but that's another story. But they bestowed their religion and their language upon us, and it made us sheep-like, you know. And I know why they probably accepted him into the church, because they felt, oh, we're Christians, and we're all supposed to be brothers and sisters, white Christians, black Christians, we're all supposed to be, although we, although we, uh, we worship separately, <laughs> but we're brothers and sisters. That's another thing, like, if we're one, let's, let's worship together. But anyway, 
and that's another thing. He was able to go into their church, and is from what I understand, the congregation is mixed. But if you were a, a single black man going to an all white church, you don't think they're gonna look at you interesting? That's my yeah, yeah. And but see, we as Keep black an eye people, on you. We, we as black, <laughs> we as black people, especially southern black people, Christians, like oh, we op- we welcome you, brother, open mm-hmm. arms and blah blah. Let me ask you, like Dre was saying. You can't roll up in a, in, a, in, a, in a mosque like that. Try it. If the, if the constituents are unfamiliar with you at all. Dude, you but why not? I mean, what, what wouldn't they be like, come, brother, worship with us? Or they would be like, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, they probably have to check you because maybe you really? not dre- you probably have to be dressed a certain way. You have to be. You have to. You have to come. Come as you are would be the stipulation that one would offer from the church. And I understand what you're saying, but I think that uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think if I rolled up into a white church today, they would necessarily assume that I was there to do them harm. I don't think. But that, they would keep an eye on you. Well, keeping an eye on me and the assumption of harm are two different things. But they didn't even keep an eye on this kid. Cause they sat I'm him right sure down, right in the ear, yeah, right. right. I mean. But. There's no way a person gonna be that close and get a yeah, get but, shoot but, nine people without but, getting somebody. But I no, mean, no, was that all? It was in the church, nine people. How many there, bullets there's a did Bible he have? study class, and it's just the notion that maybe it's not. It was not a big deal, evidently, for people that may be new to the congregation to come to a Bible study class. I see, yeah, you my, know, that's like a terrorist been. on a plane with a box cutter. All it's a hundred and some people on a plane, mm-hmm. and nobody could lay hands on this dude. But my my thing is this: I I, I see what Dre is saying, but like my me. Personally, if I've never seen this person before, and he just walked up, and you, you, not, you, you and you, my antennas would go up. Like I would tap if some dude walked up in here, some strange cat walked up in the room right now, I would tap you like Lex. You know this dude? Yeah, but and we're not in a Bible study. But, but, we're not but, in no, a church. But, but, where even my, when I was but, in but, church no, in Chicago, if door, a strange but, dude but, walked but, up in but there. But my point is this: everybody yeah. knows each other. Right. Everybody's comfortable amongst one another. There's some person you've never seen before, and he just walk up in your spot. You going to uh, check them. Is your antenna not going to come up? I'm going to say to you. I don't know. I don't know. At, at a wow. church, especially well, I don't want to be sitting at the table with you. No, no, no. But no, not for nothing. <laughs> but as we know the black church, as we know the black church, um, yeah, it just, it just in terms of just a couple minutes ago, saying that the singing of Kumbaya and what have you, that type of mentality, if it does include being receptive to strangers. But what is your instinct? What is your, your instinct when God gives you common sense? Wouldn't you think that would kick in sooner? No, like, I'll tell you why. Because as as well, see, as as about. black men, mm-hmm. do you think that if you if I saw that that guy walk up into any room I was in, do I feel threatened by him? No. In 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 in, in, in not seeing if not knowing that he was armed, would I feel threatened by his presence? Not at all. No, I'm six three two twenty five or six two two twenty five, maybe two thirty five, <laughs> <laughs> right? But it's just the notion that I wouldn't have felt physically threatened unless now. Not knowing that he was armed, why would I feel threatened? Okay, I un- but listen, I understand. Now, if you- I walked in a white church at six two two twenty five, you know, Dre, black Dre, nigga Dre, with a, with a goatee, Dre said a lot of people that. might be like, "Hey, but listen, see, I listen. might feel look, I, I'm dating your daughter." See you know what I'm saying? She invited me to you. You know what? You know <laughs> what? For you may not be threatened, right? But, but I did you, too. but you no, know you may not be threatened, but you would be aware. You I, would I say may yourself, notice. Like, what's going on? Anybody know this person? Uh, or, I mean, that's just. Would you notice or would you beg the that's question like, who it is? That's like a leopard coming into a lion's den. You think the lion going to yeah, yeah, come on in. I don't know. The lion, lion going to be like, yo, who's the this? Church, the, church is this in the, middle of the, the, the church is in the middle of town. Well, see, that's, see, right that's, where, you know, so see, it's, that, that's my point with being brainwashed because everything is peace. Instinctively, as a man, when God gives you common sense, instinctively, if you don't see, if you've never seen that person before in your life, my question is this: instinctively, also. You, your antennas are going to. If run. you like, walked in there, would you expect their their antenna to go up? If you walked in, if I was to walk into a church, yes, that and they, one. And they, and they never seen me before. They never seen me before. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, they would definitely be yes. like, "Yo, come on, sit down, brother." They would definitely. So be my like, question is: the, Okay, wasn't the, the minister? Eye, like, Yo, wasn't your, the minister a senator? Watch your purse, Susan. Yeah. He yeah. was a senator. <laughs> is are, are, are not. Political yeah. figures uh, uh, provided security. Right. Well, see that, but see, and that was one thing they said. They was like, he asked, he said, "Where's the minister?" Because from what I understand, is like the minister was he he was in part of putting he wanted to get the cameras on the police officers. After he was an the, advocate for yeah, advocate right. for that after the guy Scott got killed. Mm-hmm. 
just, just, just. Now, Ruth had been checking out this church yeah, for some dude, time now, planning it. this. It wasn't, you know, he definitely. Right. It's historic. Th the manifesto that he put together, if that was indeed written by him, was was very, very caustic, very disturbing. Um, and he, and had he told been, some friends. See, that's what yeah. I was saying. He told people. He wrote this stuff. He had stuff online. No one. There were no red flags. His parents didn't see nothing. Nobody. It's, it's just too much stuff. There's so possibly you think somebody's using him? I don't think there's too much stuff. I think it's just a kid that uh, that had a, you know has his own had his own motivation and he carried it out. Okay, if you and look at all of the shootings that's taking place, it's kids like that. Right. Okay, but they want to profile us, but what about them nutty ass kids? Right, man, that's what I'm saying. Shooting up schools and 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 this yeah. situation. I mean, okay, now is this kid, and I call him kid, he's 21, is this young man Colin representative? Bine, it's is all he, crazy white boys. Right, okay, I'm saying, is he a representative of a growing generation that includes mass murderers? Yes. And, the, and the, what, a couple things bear consistent, that being what? As you would describe, well, he's a typical profile. Right. Because look at that cat that they got the cat on trial in Denver for shooting up that uh, the movie uh, theater. Movie theater. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're trying to. Now they're trying the, to. The nursery, uh, the nursery school uh, mass murder. Yeah, but and see uh, what but upsets I'm, me I'm is talking. they always talk about they're mental illness yes, when right. it's about them, to give them. Right. But when it's us, we're thugs. We're violent. We're just. Yeah. It, you know, of, man, of course, they always try and give them a way out and excuse. Well, you know so what it's called. Live you know what it's in called. In some posh ass mental institution. You know what it's called. It's called white privilege. That's what it's called, man. And we can't sit here and deny it because I've right. I've talked to white people. I've spoken to white people, and they've the white people I've spoken to, they was like, "Yeah, man, it is fucked up. We do have white privilege." <laughs> I mean, and, they said it themselves. The, 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 thing, the like, issue, yeah, we, though, would be hey, the fact that you know, while everybody can acknowledge that there is the, a tangible privilege that that they exist in, and it's based on institutionalization, uh, uh, economic positioning, right? A number of things. Okay, like now, but I beg the question then, and we talked about this weeks ago, is this something that can take place in a, in a cause think about it, 400 years versus maybe 100 years, does it take longer than that? What, does it? change it? For a change, yeah. I mean, it's I not, it's not, I'm not gonna say I want to change tomorrow change, too, but, but I think. Dude, it's been overdue a long time. Man. It's, <laughs> overdue, okay, we all know what's right and what's wrong, but if all the chips are in my fucking, pool why am i gonna change it right why right. i have no reason and, to and, and like i said in the, in the in the tailgate with dre said it's like first of all and you know and, and like i said black people may get mad at me dude it wasn't created for us this country's not for us we were brought over here to work to become slaves and then somebody was like oh well you know what we should free him you think lincoln wanted to free free our brothers and sisters because he liked black people no he didn't do it because he liked us he did it because he had, he wanted to win the election, and you know it was it was it was it was it was finance, it was money that did it. He didn't did it. He didn't do it because he because he liked black people. Come on, man. So let's start there. Until you realize what it is, then you won't be so up in arms. You won't be so you know engulfed in, in mm -hmm. the hatred and flames because you know what it is, so you can deal with it accordingly. That's why I said, yo, hit them where it hurts. If you know where they, you, Dre, you know you in the MMA and all that. If you know where it hurts. Where you gonna hit them? You gonna hit them right there, and that's why I'm saying you gotta attack them financially, get in their pockets. Well, that's I, what the Jews look. Look at the yeah, Jews. But, why but, you think but, they hate them? Okay, there's, 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 you know, an attitude of, of racism might is is something that might be a part of a greater, you know, process. I think that if you're looking at institutional, economic, institutional disparity, I think that, you know. You know, hitting them in the pocket, Walmart, Amazon, Sears, even, you know, removing the represent representations of that. We ain't going to do it, though. You know, that's something that's helping. But I but I don't think it changes the attitudes because the attitudes don't have anything to do with a flag. Well, listen, I right? can't do anything. They can any wear that on the inside, inside their chest. Listen, that's where this comes I from. I just said hit them financially. I ain't yeah. said nothing about changing their behavior. Yeah, that, that's. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because that, that's, that's going to be long, generational. That's, right. And that's probably going to cause more rage is because, like, wait a minute, you stepped out. And did your own thing, and you took money. No, let me we, ask you guys. going to tear it down. Let Black me Wall ask Street. you guys a question. I'm going to throw it out here real quick. Um, and there was some stuff I wanted to get to with, regarding Donald Trump, who's oh, really God. about to put his foot farther into his mouth. Um, real quick, <laughs> do you guys think that? Um, um, damn, I, I'm sorry. 
let's go on to some. I, I lost my train of thought because I want to look at these two things here. I've been following a lot of different uh, things on, on uh, social media, and what I've run across is uh, usually when there's a discussion on racism, it becomes a tit for tat with white folks not wanting to acknowledge or accept it. Well, we were slaves in you know 1700s right. and like that has nothing to do with you know why is it that people just can't acknowledge the fact because they will say well black people are racist against that racism is based on on socioeconomic and uh, situation and power of which we have very little of so therefore i say anybody any minority you can be prejudiced but it's impossible to be racist and that's what they don't understand well do you think then that after obama is out of office then essentially the jig is up without Whereas a doubt we, because because i'm actually thinking that the time for we all as black men felt that there was a time where there could be significant strides made within the tenure of, of an Obama presidency. Well, that did not happen. Now, do you think that once he leaves office, then there are certain windows of light that were open with the slam shut? I'm going to say this. Especially uh, the Republicans uh, gain control of the executive branch. Tell me what you think it is. Okay, no other president has been as accessible as President Barack Obama. Right. You had a dude get on the elevator with a gun with him. You had people reach the fence and make it to the front door. Go to dinners. You, you had, yeah, all of these you know. things were signals saying, look, we could touch you if we want to. B bullet holes in the windows at so, the White House. There you go. Right. So regardless right. of how much he might have wanted to, reality is just like this kid just walked into a church. I, I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but that minister, he was a powerful cat. He was, he was one of the dudes in line. I mean, he was at 21 gaining you know what i'm saying he was he was doing some positive things he was taken out are you saying that this that, and the that, dude are you saying said that might have been i a, had to fulfill my mission are you saying mission, that dylan, are, you, are you saying dylan roof then is a manchurian uh candidate yes. if you will a manchurian yes. soldier if you yes. will interesting mm. i've never heard you espouse anything with conspiracy theory at the root andre because mm. there's too much going on right now we that's we a long reach be too. light we want to be light and airy and be funny, but it's like since we started this show, shit's been going on so crazy. Every week we got to talk about some somebody getting beat down, killed. Something's going. And, and, is and it a smoke screen? And, What's going on? And you say, and you saying, is the jig up after Obama leave the office? Right. That, that's a that's a legitimate you know question. The jig was never up because even when he's in an office, mm -hmm. look how many young black boys have been slain and right. killed, like like they. Whatever, and look how much stuff it seemed like. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, dog. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed like we got worse when he got in the office. Well, That's what I'm that saying. There's a reverberance of 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 reaction against his 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 election. His election, and it's just like it's a that reaction is one that's came out in, in Donald Trump the says hate. It. You know. We want to get our country back. Yeah, and we know what exactly that? what he means. You know who he's, and, but we also know who he's speaking to in that contingent. Um, could Speaking get him elected, he's, and he's, and that's why the Latino community right. needs to jump on board. Well, he's he's no, attacking no, believe them. Me, he's lost the Latino community completely. Yeah, of course. But I'm saying he the just, fact that that, that that he feels comfortable getting up there saying the things that he said. That's and he said it again privilege. today. He reiterated statements like that today. And that's ignorance. That's hatred yeah. and ignorance. But is he rabble rousing? I mean, what I'm seeing is um, there's going to be a lot of people that look at his business acumen. And say, okay, he can run. Uh, he can run corporations, i.e., run America. And then they like his the vigor, the vitriol. They buy into that, like we're going to get our country back. Check this out. And those he's a things, brand. He's been bankrupt. Check he, this he out. Just, but but those are things that can motivate people to push him into office. Yeah. See, get they, if to see, here's the thing: if people knew Donald Trump, they just know, like you said, the brand. The image. Trump did, image. Right. It's all image, dog. He's and a great showman, akin to Barman Bailey. Even he's run so many companies into the ground. Now, do you think I'll let you think I'll let this put this man at the helm of the country when he's run? And if you're basing it on him running corporations, shit, we in trouble. We in trouble. Well, I, I think we as trouble. many people in America that would say that those things are true, that we would be in trouble. There are as many people that would say that he might be the right person. I think he knows how to get to those people that will get behind him. Well, you know what, Lex? and that might be enough to get him in office. And see, and you know what, the 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 the, the the stupid thing about that is that those people that put him in office, they're going to be the ones that really suffer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because 
we as black people ain't enough of us to put him in office. No. So where most of the votes are going to come from. So let's not get things twisted here. You got some underprivileged white people who suffer just as right. bad as black people, but yeah. they just got an edge because they white. They still can use that white mm. privilege card. I think that they, but they, there's, there, there's more people, there's more white people below the poverty line than there are black people. Oh, without a doubt. There's more of them on welfare. Of course. But once again, that... that, that but it's the but media. If proportionally speaking and percentage-wise, that's, that's where you see a schism. Because if you look at it from the vise of percentage, then it would be the, then we would actually our numbers would come a greater, a greater percentage of our people are living below the poverty line, compared to the percentage of their people yeah, living below the poverty I line. See, yeah. it's just a number thing because their numbers are exponentially greater than right, ours. But right, percentage right. wise, we we are still living, you know, and that means that nothing has changed even with eight years of Obama in office. Now I I'm a big Obama supporter, Obamacare, what have you. But um, like you said, it does seem like things have gotten um, a little bit worse. I don't know. Can we admit it? Are we are we admitting it? I, it's it's as, worse as, as far as racism is concerned. But overall, or the slap the, in the, the face. The, the country itself is doing pretty doggone good. Right. Okay. So yeah, it, it's it's bad as far as what the media shows in regards to how they express their their. Hatred. So let me ask you this. You think it's gotten better for black people since he's been in office? Or you think it's been, been the same or you think it's got worse? Well, a lot of people are going to have health care that wouldn't have had health care. Okay, so, you know, I'm talking about the unemployment. That's still a big issue. And it's a big black, issue, black, but, black, black but you kids, know what? Black kids getting shot down and, on the, and, and, on and, the, real. and, the, and the people are walking off. Okay, on well, the that, that's going to only, I'm sorry. That, that's on us to deal with that. But on the real, we've never had it good. Never. So... Comparatively far, speaking, comparatively, too. Right. Com comparatively speaking. So we're going to survive regardless. It don't really make a difference who's in the White House, honestly. I That's, said that yeah, well, from that the was jump. My, that was my point. It yeah, don't make like, a difference who's in the leave, White House. When he leaves, it's still going to be like, oh, still messed yeah. up. Uh, unless they change some <laughs> still, laws and, yeah, and bring back slavery in, you or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, 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 look, look, you got people that be like, yo, I lived in the hood when Obama was in office, and when he leave office, I'm still, still in the hood. Exactly. So ain't nothing changed for me. Like, I didn't even feel it. But... I would say it's up to individuals to make that change. See, we, we want make people are change. constantly looking for handouts and opportunities to be given to them that, as opposed well, to that's what I was saying going for before. It. But that change that takes a change in the mindset. You know, the the internet is the greatest thing that was ever invented. I look at Facebook and I, I I'm, I'm that's there's so much information out there that people aren't taking advantage of. You can go on YouTube and learn to speak another language. You know what I'm saying? You got to get it if you want it because it's there. Stop using these excuses but you, it's so and just get it, man. Stop looking at basketball players as the benchmark. Stop looking at rappers as the benchmark and look at your own community and say, okay, if I can just get five steps further than I was and do what you got to do, change your mindset, get your hustle straight, man. Check this out. I look at it like this. Social media came out the perfect time. Because this generation, it's not like the generation when we were teenagers in the eighties, yes, I'm telling on ourselves. We had we had certain shows, there was certain music. Just imagine we would have had access to the world like that. I think I think our generation, those teenagers would have used it differently. As opposed to what these what these uh uh, what this generation is doing, yeah, I, I twerking. If I yo, if I see another twerking are, video. Are you saying that the internet it should be used as a tool to to gain yes a, to a cent or no one knows how big or small your business is. If instead of slinging CDs on the street, annoying people to buy <laughs> your shit, set up a website, man, mm -hmm. and be international, be global. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's there to be had. Right. Nobody knows how big or small your your distribution or, uh, can be. Use the Twitter and all of that. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, what's the white girl, the, the uh, Molly Cyrus or whatever. Who what's the, not Molly Cyrus? The other chick. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. They using it to the, to the, to the, they using mm. it the right way. They doing what they got to do. But we want to do all of the nonsense talking. I mean, come on, man. And that's why, that's where they get us. Because they, you're so occupied acting a fool. They just putting everything right by you. Pew, pew. You well, know tonight, <laughs> people, we do hope that you have received what we've discussed, um, not only for the, the value of, of the subject matter, but also as a means to come to a solution. And as Andre has spelled out, there are ways that we could all collectively, uh, you know, pull ourselves up by our proverbial bootstraps 
um, and and get her things uh, get her things on board. And um, can and I say one thing? Certainly enough. This show is a perfect example of that because it just came about from us talking right. when we work out in the morning and saying that there is no voice for people of color to keep it real and express themselves. And this brother, he's like, well, hey, let's do it. And he's making it happen. So hopefully you all will spread the word, come on the show, call in, let people know about this show because there are so few black run businesses or, 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 or media outlets where we can express ourselves freely, say what we really mean and put it out there to the masses so that perhaps we can enlighten other people and touch people's hearts so that there can be a, ch a positive change. Well, so thank you, Lex. I appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt. What's up? Well, What's up? <laughs> Formula R3, you know what it's about. Yeah, go out and get it. Rise, rock, and restore your love life. She'll love you in the morning. No doubt. No doubt. For all the good people here at the Man Cave Live Show on LATalkRadio.com, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be back here next Thursday. <clears throat> Always on top of things here. Your man on the street, both above and below. I'm your man Lex Seal at Lex Seal 11. We'll see you next week here, Man Cave Live. Be good. Peace. Be safe. Peace. Great job. From our perspective, this is Man Cave Live. With your host, Lexington Steele. And co-host, Andre Lavelle. And Johnny Depp. On L.A. Talk Radio. Let's get it in.